Hey, we are making a chicken rutabaga bake. Look at that. It's rich and creamy and chickeny and delicious. Stay tuned and see how I made it. Hi, welcome to my channel. I've lost 180 pounds with keto, carnivore, and counting calories. Don't forget to check the description to this video. I have links to some of my popular videos, a link to my Amazon account for a lot of things that you all ask about. Don't forget I have a bunch of playlists on the homepage of this channel. Thank you. I'm gonna show you all how when I create a meal, this is how I figure out my macros and so we're gonna start from scratch. That is frozen. I buy heavy whipping cream and I freeze it. And so um, I freeze it in like 15 gram sections, but just to be, you know, precise, that's, um, so I write everything to heavy whipping cream, 34 gram. This right here is, is plain cream cheese, um, not low carb or low fat or anything. So cream cheese, 41 gram. So I'm going to kind of put these together here because I'll need them later on in the process. But I just want to make sure I, I weigh everything out to keep it as accurate as possible. So I've got those. I'm going to need some chicken broth later. We'll figure that out. Um, all right, let's move over to the stove. Before I do that, we actually need to weigh out this chicken that we're going to use. So chicken, 534 grams. Okay, now let's go to the stove. For this, we're just going to use a regular skillet. I'm not going to use my cast iron skillet. I'm going to take out a little bit of bacon fat. This is what I used this morning with my bacon. 13, I'm trying to get to 15 grams just because I know that's a tablespoon. So I'm going to heat this up and get this melted a little bit and I'll be back with you. Okay, <clears throat> the bacon, bacon fat has melted. I'm going to add this. This is rotisserie chicken. So this is uh, chicken that I got a long time ago. I think it, I don't know, it might be, ro might be. Crock pot chicken, I can't remember. But um, it's already cooked is my point. But what I wanna do next is kind of, I wanna kind of dry it out a little bit in the sense of, I want to um, kind of brown it a little bit and, and uh, just kind of heat it up all the way through. So um, I'm gonna put a lid on it just for a little bit. If I can find the lid, there we go. Put the lid on it. Heat it up, kind of get it more broken up than it already is, and then I'll be back. So now what I do is I just kind of go through and just kind of help break it apart a little more. Um, it's still too cool. Um, once it warms up a little bit more, it breaks up easier. But I'm wanting these chunks that I got from, um, I'm pretty sure this is rotisserie because that's breast, and I don't ever cook chicken breast. Um, I'm pretty sure that's rotisserie. So yeah, so I'm gonna keep going until it cools off or warms up more <coughs> so I can pierce it with this and it'll just kind of break apart. So I'll be back. Okay, so now watch, see how, this is a chunk right here. But when I push my, my spoon into it, it starts separating better. And so that's what I'm looking for. That tells me that it's kind of getting, that it's doing what I want it to do. So if I can push down and kind of break it up a little bit, um, that's that's what I'm looking for because I'm trying to break it up. As, um, I could put it out on a paper plate and run through it with the knife. I could do that too or on a cutting board, whatever. Um, <clears throat> that would work too. This is just my lazy method and a way I know I'm heating it up anyway. Now I don't know what seasoning is on here, so I'm going to have to taste it. Let me taste it and see what it tastes like. Mm. 
pretty doggone bland. So let's look at some things we got. I'm gonna put some Greek seasoning in here. We're gonna put some Herbe de Provence in it. We're gonna add some Italian seasoning. And some basil. Now, let's kind of keep stir that up a little more. I should have got my bigger skillet. I always say that. I say, oh, I need to get the bigger skillet, but I'll try this little one. And then, as I'm cooking, I'm like, dang it, Terry, should have used the bigger skillet. But you know, it's all right. It'll work. It'll just be. I have to be more careful with it. I might need more, well, some salt in this. I don't really know. Kind of trying to clean it up as I go a little bit here. Yeah. Yeah, let me try just a little shredded piece of it. Boy, is that better. But it does need salt. Where's my salt? Back here. Y'all, I got this thing up. Oh, you can't see it. With my with my shelves over here and my seasonings in it. <laughs> Makes it a lot easier to grab my salt. <clears throat> so I have some seasonings over here. <clears throat> and some on the counter. And some up above me. On the shelf my sister made. So I can kind of just have stuff scattered out wherever I need it at the time. So I'm going to finish doing this and then I'll, I'll show you how, what we're going to do next. Give me just a little bit more time. So I did go to the bigger one. Um, I'm going to house the chicken in this skillet for, or this pan for a minute. And then we're going to go forward with what we're doing. <clears throat> now we're going to make like a, a cream sauce for it. Um, <clears throat> I haven't really thought about how yet, but let me think. We're going to use some red wine. If you do not use wine, that is perfectly fine. You can use just broth or you can use water. Um, but I'm going to use some red wine. So I'm going to zero this out with it on it so I kind of know how much I've used. Okay, our wine, 100 grams, which is more than I usually use, but that's all right. So now I'm just going to kind of let that simmer for a couple seconds while I put this away. You can use your own Alfredo, or you can make your own Alfredo. You can start this with uh, raw chicken and then deglaze your pan that way. I'm going to get some of the dehy or the roasted garlic that I have. <clears throat> um, I'm out of the regular garlic. Which, you know, if you remember when I used it, remember I made oatmeal with it. <laughs> Not literally, but. So I'm going to just kind of let that all kind of simmer for a little bit. And then we're going to be adding some other things. So give me just a couple seconds here. Okay, it's been about two minutes. So now this is the 34 grams of heavy cream and 41 grams of cream cheese. So now I'm just gonna let that all kind of melt together here. I'm gonna put a lid on it because you know the heavy cream was frozen and the cream cheese is frozen. So I'm gonna put this on there just for a couple minutes so that way it can defrost and melt. Ooh, I love when it's a weekend and I get to play Kayla and listen to my Christian music and sing and dance and pray. Makes for a good day. <clears throat> so that's the wine and the cream cheese and heavy cream mixture. We're going to add some broth. I don't know how much it's going to be, so I'll have to zero it out from before I start. 
I don't want a whole, whole lot because this isn't a big thing, but I want a little more than what I have. Let's see. 60. Yeah, let's see. How much is a serving? 240. I don't know about all that. Let's see how much this is. Okay, I'll, it's 130. How about I go with 150? Close enough. It's 144, but we'll go with 150. So hang on. Chicken broth, 150 gram. So I'm going to add, let me put this in the fridge. So what I want to do is let this kind of simmer a little bit. and It's not going to thicken up, but I would like it to reduce. But I want to taste it, so hang on. Let's see what we think. Remember, we've added no seasonings. I'm going to put a little Greek seasoning in to kind of tie it all together. I definitely taste the red wine. But, you know, chicken is bland, so you kind of have to go heavy with seasonings if you want there to be any kind of flavor. There is still some seasoning chunks from before. Oh, that's good. Now, I'm going to set my timer. I'm going to turn it down a little bit to number three. I'm going to come back in seven minutes, and I'll be back. Okay, something else we need to add is glucomannan. I do want it to be a little thicker, so I'm going to zero it out. And y'all, it doesn't matter what kind of scale you have. Just have a just some kind of food scale. They all do the same thing. You want it on to be able to be. I should say, you want one that has grams, ounces, and something that lets you zero it out. So we're gonna. I don't think I've ever measured how much I put in before. So that's why I want to do it and just see kind of what I do. <clears throat> Two grams. And this kind of creeps up on you. I don't feel like that's enough, but I'm going to let it go for a couple minutes and then we'll see if it's enough. All right, let's do a little bit more. Wait a minute. I guess I zeroed it back out. Like I said, I don't want it thick like an Alfredo. Really? It's not even a gram. Well, I'm going to make it an even. Let me do it until it says one. A while ago it said two. All right, so I'm going to say it's three. We're going to go with three grams. I don't know how much it really is, but this is not a good container. This container does not fit up here very well, but oopsies. There we go. <clears throat> That's okay. You didn't have, you didn't, you didn't get to witness my mistake. So... All right, so it's going to thicken up some, which is good. So now what I want to do is I want to add the chicken back in here. Now listen, by the way, I didn't plan this meal. I'm just winging it as I go. I'm just thinking, boy, what sounds good? And I'm thinking, well, cheese, Alfredo-y something or another, red wine, and chicken. Because I knew I had all this excess chicken. And so I figured, well, let me just show you how I create a recipe. And then we'll go from there. And we're going to wing it. <clears throat> we're winging it. We're winging it. I'm going to turn the heat off. Oop, I should have preheated my oven. So bake. Let me get my bake oven on 350. Nothing's down in there. I don't know about you, but growing up, my mama always stored her skillets or unused skillets in the oven. Now, I don't do that normally. Once in a blue, blue moon. But, um, so in our house, it always has to be a habit to check the oven at mom's house. And my sister has burned mom's skillet more than one time. So, uh, anyway. <clears throat> so this is nice and mixed up got some texture to it which is what we we're looking for so now we're gonna use rutabaga and I don't know how much rutabaga this is so let's measure it out and see I 
127 grams. One, wait a minute, what if I take it down? Well, that ain't enough for tomorrow. Okay, so 127 gram. Okay, so now we're gonna put our little pan, our little baking dish over here. And if you are a texture person where textures bother you, I would say probably you might want to um, bake this. Wait, no, we're baking it. We're doing it kind of like a lasagna type thing. So let me put a little bit on the bottom. Kind of like a lasagna. But we're making it kind of like a lasagna but only with the rutabaga and chicken. All right, now, so then I'm just kind of lining them up. <clears throat> like I said, my friend Leslie said that, that whenever I did the lasagna with the rutabaga, I should have cooked the rutabaga first. So that's for you all who, I like, I, uh, who knows what I like, I like whatever. I like whatever I can put in my mouth. So, you know, if you're doing this, I would say probably do like Leslie said and um, and cook your noodles, boil your noodles first. Or not noodles, huh? boil your rutabaga first. That, would, that was her suggestion. So if you're a normal person, then go with what she says. If you don't care about textures and you're a little more than more lazy than than texture concerned, then um, could definitely do like I'm doing. <clears throat> it's gonna be yum yum yum. I'm probably gonna double up some of it. I got a bunch of little pieces, so I'm just gonna put it all in there and be done with it. Since I'm not trying to do anything, whenever I scoop it out, it's not going to be fancy. So like I said, I'm just showing you all how I create a recipe. And when I'm done, I'll show you how I figure out the macros and whatnot. But you have to write everything down that's going into whatever it is you're cooking. You got to weigh it and write it all down. Probably more rutabaga than there is chicken. But that's all right. Oh yeah, that's gonna be good. Um, now, we are gonna top it with some mozzarella. So, I'm gonna zero this out. Okay. This is the fat-free shredded mozzarella. I have the Great Value brand. My, I, I have a Walmart market next to near me. So the super Walmarts, the, the big Walmart stores, they don't have all the different things that the little Walmart markets have. There's been times where I've gone, where I've looked at the big Walmart thing. Wait, 84 grams. Um, <clears throat> there's been times where I've looked at the big Walmart app versus the Walmart Market app. And the big Walmart will show that they're out of things and my little Walmart will have it. Or they'll show that they don't sell something and my little Walmart will have it. So, my little Walmart, definitely, if you have a Walmart Market, I like it because I don't get tempted by all the, but I don't get distracted by the clothes and the, and the kitchen gadgets and all that stuff. Okay. Putting the... I keep my uh, I keep my cheese in the freezer, so I'm gonna put this in the oven. We'll check in about um, 30 minutes. While it's in the recipe, I sit down and I I plug everything into chronometer, which I did. I have to do it on my phone. My iPad is just too old to uh, download any apps. Um, so, and I ain't about to go pay $500 for a new iPad. No. Um, so anyway. So I plug it all into my phone, chronometer, and whenever I plugged all the ingredients in, 
uh, one sir if I made it into one serving, it was 1,541 calories. <clears throat> There's 197 protein, 26 carbs, and 61 fat. Well, the cool thing about chronometer is it lets you break it down into how many uh, servings you want to do, and you can kind of adjust it. You could say, well, do I want two? No, that, no, that's too much. Well, what if I break it into three? So like this, I put it into three, and this is what it came up to. If I put it in three servings, it's 514 calories, 66 protein, and 8.6 total carbs, and 20 fat. Wait a minute. Let me see if it's total carbs or, or um, net carbs. Hang on. Okay, yeah, it's set to total carbs. So it's 8.6 total carbs. So, um, you know, if you're doing net carbs, of course, that would lower it because I'm sure there's a couple fiber in the rutabaga. Um, but, yeah, so you could have that by itself or you could have it with some, like, you know, if when it's done, you could take uh, make yourself a chaffle and um, have egg white chaffle with no cheese, uh, egg white chaffle and put some, um, you know, some kind of Italian seasoning or something on it. So you could serve it with a bunch of different things and I'll show you when it's done, but I just wanted to tell you that's how I do it. I weigh everything, I plug it all in as if I'm making a recipe. And then at the end, I look and see what the total calories are and how many calories I want. And then, uh, then I figure it out, that I tell it that many servings. So that's what I did. So now I'll show you how it's, whenever it's all done. Okay, look, doesn't that look pretty? I can't wait to taste it. Okay, so even if you are not a texture person, you might end up wanting to uh, boil the, the rutabaga first. It's a little hard to cut, but that's all right. Yeah. This plate's very hot. So, there you go. Mm hmm. Creamy. Taste the chicken. The garlic. The rutabaga. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good. Another fun baker. Sorry, another fun baker cuisine. Okay, bye.